Onivia, League of Legends highlights. One composition and then your only risk becomes getting bullied a little bit too much early and... I actually, I, I kind of don't like the Orn just because Subjugate has one really good target if you pick Orn, right? But uh, if you play... Wait, so mid control, package acquired, fresh shop for the Gragas. As fake, okay, gonna get hooked. Wow, that was some range and some hitbox from the dredge line as now we're gonna go for a 50-50. Ona locks it down as now Zayas is in trouble running away from this one. Super Mega Death Rocket comes down as Dove is just going to get that knee to work through and Ona comes down. Oh, not able to get the... And I don't know if uh, Lefsam looks really ready for this, Kyle. is on the uh, top half of the map and it might have some suggestion. Oh, the hook barely going to miss. And by barely, I mean actually quite a decent miss, but that's the playback and Dove is still dead. Good she throws out the Super Mega Death Rocket and Zayas stays alive. And so the beginning of this lane swap working out on that. Yeah. Closer is, could potentially be a saving grace, as you can see. Still uh, even when it comes to the CS and things like this. Everfrost is now done, so a bunch more CC as he gets on the chase. Killer. Faker's like, not playing Hecarim now, are you? <laughs> huh? Huh? I'm safe. Look at me! Feels a lot better. That being said, it will be pretty frustrating if he gets like interrupted out of a Valkyrie with a oh, pillar yeah. and he's like, ah, curses. As Kale, yeah, that was not the dredge line you wanted to take. It's great body slam as the CC is just everywhere. Super Mega Death Rocket might have been overkill, but it's still going to get the kill as Croco with the subjugate there as the package. This one was used offensively. And Ona picks that one up as he's transforming into absolutely everyone. That's a pillar. Will guarantee the zap, but I have a feeling that Live Sandbox might be okay. The bane of horrors everywhere, but definitely good for staying in camouflage throughout Summoner's Rift. And that is going to be the second drink. Incredibly tough uphill battle for Sandbox. Yeah, this is the problem. You can see they're trying to side lane now, but the defensive play around these sides has been working out so, so well for T1. They can rip through the waves and uh, these. Yeah, teleport gonna get Faker out of there and does mean that uh, Close is gonna waste some time there towards the top side oh. of the map. And so yeah, this is just, it's ring around the rosy. But this is the beauty, right? Like, it works twofold, because yes, he used it to get out of the gank, but the rest of the sandbox is trying to collapse on Faker, thinking that he might be a weak spot, but instead he teleports towards the mid lane where the rest of his team is standing ready with a wave, and yep. they just get a free turret, and this has been happening. As ice. A little bit dangerous, that positioning. Vision still there for T1. Faker's gonna take one of his own rockets, and actually, Ice did a fair bit of damage there. Calibrum at the ready. Crescendum there as well. The team fight tools are available, but now T1 walking on in. Dredgeline going to connect. The depth charge as well. They're trying to focus down the Gragas, and they will get him, as these rockets from Closer are doing a lot of work. And T1 gonna have to back away and give over the Chemtech Drake to live Sandbox. A great play from them. Closer starting to assert his dominance, dominance here on the Silas. And there you do see where the comp of the Sandbox excels, right? We mentioned previously, if they can find a single target, they go through very quickly. I think Zeus may be feeling a little false, safe sense of security considering how tanky he is, but for Gwen, that's not a oh, lot. Oh no, Ice caught out of position. Good uh, dredge line there though from Kale to try and stop him from going down as Croco. He's not gonna be so lucky. Closer turns up again a little bit too late, but he left his team for the Wolves and the Wolves have consumed them. Kale now trying to flash his way out. Titan's Wrath kept him alive for a little bit longer, but now Gumiyushi is excited, and why wouldn't he be as he's picking up so many of these kills? The Moonlight Vigil goes absolutely wide, and in the end, it's an ace for T1. Don't ask me how they did it, Atlas, but this is vintage T1 right there. Looking like they lose a fight on mid, baiting in your opponent, and then looking like they might just end right here, right now. Yep, they certainly could, and 404 Jinx was not found by Live Sandbox in that team fight. I think is uh, what that scoreline is telling us. These Nexus turrets not long for the world, and from what it looked like, Live Sandbox making a decent play, finding themselves a skirmish, has ended up with a dead Nexus. And uh, first, it's going to be a dead Croco just for a little while longer, and Kale is also going to suffer the same fate, but the Nexus is not going to survive, and T1 will do it in just over 25 minutes. Can't even fault Sandbox for that one. This is just the sheer class of T1.